So Detroit is uh, um, uh, uh, the story um, of androids in the near future. The game takes place 20 years from now in the city of Detroit in the US. And by then, technology has evolved to a point where there are androids that look, move, speak exactly like us. So uh, we treat them like machines because we created them. They are just you know, advanced machines, but actually, um, the story starts at the moment where they start to open their eyes and, and feel conscious. And they are going to start fighting for their rights and wanting freedom, of course. So um, for, for us, the goal was not just to do sci-fi. It was not just to imagine a very distant future. It was much more to imagine our world and imagine what the, our world would be like with this kind of technology available. David さんは、えー、この、えーデトロイドビカムヒューマンに登場する一般的なアンドロイドというのをどのような存在として描きましたか Well, the, the starting point was really to have androids that would look like human beings exactly.、Uh, they would just look like us, speak like us, and, but be used like machines. So we,、uh, we thought that in this future, People would like to have androids that look like humans because it's easier to have them in our environment and to collaborate with them, to accept them because they look like us. So they really developed very complex things like even you know, blinking the eyes or emulating breath breathing, although it's absolutely not necessary, but it just feels like they are closer to us. So that's really the type of, of things that we imagined. ありがとうございます。人間に似ているアンドロイドではあるけど、道具として使われているっていうことでしょうか。Yes, exactly. And of course, they are very advanced tools because they can do incredible things. I mean, they never sleep, they are never sick, they never complain,、uh, they can memorize everything,、uh, they never make mistakes. So these are big difference with human beings, and it's,、uh, it's something that, that is worrying and at the same time very, very interesting. So we try to explore really what would be the impact of this technology made available on individuals, but also on society. And、uh, we did a lot of research.、Uh, it, it was not just a, 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 you know, a creation of, of creativity, it was also something that was very documented. So we went to meet scientists in labs. We really did a lot of research in order to understand what we could reasonably expect and what kind of conflicts would happen、uh, with this technology available. So that was really the starting point of, of,、uh, of Detroit. And、uh, yes, I mean, technologies like、uh, Asimo, for example,、uh, were very interesting because at the same time, there's something very human in the way these robots move. But at the same time, it's not exactly human. So I was very interested in that. And another starting point was probably the notion of dilemma.、Uh, one of the very interesting questions with、uh, intelligent cars is how is the software going to deal with dilemmas? Like your car is confronted with a, with a, a very dangerous situation, and there is maybe one pregnant woman on one side, and maybe a group of people on the other, and your car needs to decide who you are going to hit. I mean, as a human being, we would make a decision instinctively, but, but in this case, what will the AI decide? It's a really a dilemma. And the notion of dilemma was very interesting for me in the context of Detroit, but also in the context of machines. What would ma machines decide in this kind of situations? もう一つですね、アンドロイドについてお聞きしたいと思います。こちらの作品、デトロイドでは、変異体っていうアンドロイドが登場します。この変異体とは、アンドロイドが一体どのような状態になったことを言うんでしょうか。お願いします。Yeah, of course, something has to go wrong, otherwise, there is no story. Uh, so, uh, what went wrong is that we imagine something that we never really explain. We don't really explain why some machines start to rebel, start to feel fear or anxiety or, or anger.、Um, there is probably a, a, a trauma. In their past, triggering this reaction. We don't know exactly how it works. We can, we can see the image here where they break their wall of instructions. Suddenly, they become free.、Uh, we don't know if it's a bug 
We don't know if it's a natural evolution just because AI becomes so advanced that um, there are some procedural things happening. I mean, some code that was not written by anyone happening and making these androids want to be free. And I think that's a very interesting topic because sometimes uh, people, people are really concerned about um, what we program with androids, but I think the most interesting thing is what we don't program. What will be the emerging behaviors with androids? And there have been some very interesting experiments with AI where, for example, they allowed two AI to invent their own language and the two AI started talking to each other and up to a point where human beings didn't understand anymore what they were talking about. And I think this is very interesting and very intriguing and very scary somehow because they will create their own you know, dialogue and start to talk to each other and we won't understand what they're talking about. Maybe they will be talking about us or maybe they will be talking about Android things. Uh, who knows? And I think everything that is emerging that was not programmed but that happened is something very, very intriguing to me. ありがとうございます。AI が何か大きなストレスとか過去のトラウマとかを感じたときにですね、そこから先私たちの考えもつかないような行動を AI たちが自由にやり出す、そういった状態をこの作品では変異体と呼んでいるということで良いでしょうか。Yeah, no, exactly. It's suddenly they don't behave、uh, in a rational way because what do we expect from a machine and from AI is to be rational. So we have, all have our definition of what being rational exactly means, and, and it can mean many, many different things.、Um, but in this case, they start to have behaviors that would become irrational, like even emotional. What if they became jealous? What if they could feel fear? How would they react to that? I mean, for me, that's a very intriguing question. Thank you.